Hello, 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 beautiful people. Varlamor Expansion is here. I am not ready at all. I'm a little bit late. Let's get into it. Firstly, I'm looking at the quests and looks like we have four new quests. Death on the Isle, Ethnically Acquainted Antiquities. Uh, that's probably the same as the Frog Quest. The Heart of Darkness and we also got uh, Meat and Goody. Very interesting. I wonder how many of these I'll be able to complete on my Varlamor Locked uh, Iron Man, to be honest. So that's gonna be interesting for sure. But yeah, let's just get right into it. I don't really know where to begin, uh, but we're just gonna kind of send it and uh, explore it for the first time. So looking at the map, this is basically what's new. Quetzal Gorge. And obviously this is where you fight the big new boss. Bro, there's like, I, I guess this is a place for 3.0 expansion still. I don't know what Aldarin is. This place looks kind of nice. Looks like we're gonna maybe need some coins to get to this place. If there's any new travel places, there is. So look, now when you click onto the travel with a bird, you also have the Quikali Gorge. And there's another one up there that we can uh, probably build. So what do we got here? We got a bank and we got a spinning wheel. Hold up. We can actually get flax on our Varlamor account, so with spinning wheel, I can actually make bow strings so that I can actually make better bows. That is big news for my Varlamor account, to be honest. I got a little trade here, nothing crazy in the shop, little cabbage field. Can I just go and fight the boss? I'm just gonna go and fight the boss, I'm just gonna get somewhat of a decent inventory setup, and we're just gonna send one kill if I can instantly do it, and then we're gonna worry about quests in a little bit, I think. I don't know what's up here, but I feel like this is not where the boss would be, to be honest. But hey, we're, we're gonna check it out anyways. So ladies and gentlemen, if you ever wondered if you wanted to run around this big ass mountain to get to the top, let me tell you, probably not worth it, there's a fucking obelisk over here. So yeah, I thought there would be a boss up here, I was wrong, let's go somewhere else, I guess. Uh, uh, this is probably a part for a quest, it has to be, right? Uh, so we're definitely gonna have to do this run again, but not something we needed. So I'm gonna now probably assume the boss is here. It makes sense the bank is right there as well. But before we continue, I would love to tell you more about the sponsor of today's video, Boot.dev. This is one of my favorite sponsors to work with on the channel. Boot.dev's mission is to simply teach you programming. They focus on the backend development using Python and Go programming languages. The reason why I find them so cool is because they make learning how to code fun and unique. As you're learning, you will be gaining experience, levels, achievements, and you also complete quests and fight to be on the global leaderboards. Our friends at Boot.dev believe that the best way to learn how to code is to never be bored. And the way they accomplished that is they created a really cool online self-paced platform that feels like you're playing a captivating RPG game. Boot.dev is designed to make you writing a ton of code because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is by far the best way to learn. And since they don't want you to feel like you're spending your money on something that is not actually helping you, they offer a 30-day no questions asked money back policy, but also a free demo with all the interactive features. So if you want to learn how to code, make sure you click the link in the description, use the code MikaRS, you will get 25% off your first payment. That can be 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on your subscription. I'm looking forward to some of you guys learning how to code and a massive shout out to Boot.dev for continuously supporting the channel. But now, let's get back to the video. Oh, the boys are here, look. They're going crazy on the boss right now, okay. You can wait until then, try another world or create a private encounter. Okay, how do I create a private encounter? This, fight privately. Start a public friends fight based on privacy setting. Uh, oh, okay. L let me do one in a mass and then uh, we'll do smaller groups. Is there 20 people here? No, we are in. All right, let's go. Let's put entity hider on so we kind of see what's going on. Okay, you need to move away from the floor and you need to hit the bot like this stuff before you can move through. There's a guy seer. What the fuck? There's this guy, like, following you in the fight. That's kinda chill. There it is. The Huayo Cattle. What is this name? Keep praying to recharge the pillars. What is going on? We're just hitting. Okay, now the tails spawn. Oh, I feel like I could have maybe dodged that somehow. Okay, so this has to be melee, right? Red has to be melee. Green has to be range. What if this is crush? And this has to be melee. I got hit by like these waves. I don't really know how you're supposed to deal with those. 
Oh, that's range. I'm a bit late, but it's fine. Okay, so yeah, it's a med level boss. I can see myself doing this on my hardcore Iron Man, by the way. On my Varlamor account. I got nature runes. But where? Am I dumb? Okay, am I stupid? Like, where's my loot? I mean, maybe it was the Entity Hider, but like... Look, they would still be here, right? Oh, they are. It was the Entity Hider. Nature runes. No, this guy stole it. Pencil neck yoinked my nature runes. I will never forget that moment. That's messed up. Uh, but yeah, so far, the boss is super simple, right? You pray accordingly. You dodge the spells. You dodge the floor stuff. You pray accordingly. I don't know what to pray against this frozen technology thing. Uh, and then you just hit the boss. I'm just sighting it right now. I don't know if I'm dealing good damage or not. You could see them on the screen why entity- Oh! My ground items are off. I am dumb! Alright, we're fine. Alright, here we go. A uh, little bit of raw lobster. Okay. The loot so far, not very good on mass. Hmm, I'm starting to feel like for the tail, I would need to swap gear. Like, that's... I don't think the side works on the tail, to be quite honest here. Okay, so it's hitting, but it's hitting very low. But I guess that's the point of this, right? That you, would like, don't hit high. Oh! What did I just get? Hold up. We got a new collection log. Hwaka seed. There it is. What can I do with the Hwaka seed? This better be good, because, like, I don't know. Oh, it's for prayer enhance. Wait, but do you need to plant it first? And then you need to make, like, a herb out of it? Or how does that work? I guess we'll have to figure it out. Oh, yeah, there's a new course as well. We're gonna test that out also. So it looks like you just need to pray against the attack. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we got a rune mace. Here you can see, so the boss drops something, and then you basically see how much you got out of it, right? It's like 20 way split, pretty much. I guess it also depends, like, how much damage you actually deal. So there we go. The kill is down. And we got a Guam seed. 16 Guam seeds from this one. We are now gonna quick slide out of the boss. We Okay, that's actually kinda cool. And now it is time for us to explore something else. This boss is pretty simple. I'll probably return to it in the future. But now we have a bunch of quests and the entire area to explore and see what there is to offer. I've heard something about the new Naguas. I've heard something about the new crush weapon. I want to explore everything, see what's up. Like there is a dungeon here. Like what's in this dungeon? You know what I mean? Like we're going to test out everything. Let's take a look at the fishing spots. Oh, wait, actually, you know... Maybe it's a kind of chill place. Look, you can fish here, you can cook here, and then you can drop it. Probably for very early level, but like, you know, the, 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 the possibility is there. Ooh, wait, there's a plate body shop. Hold up. There's a transportation. Unbuilt landing site. Okay, so you can create a drop down here for the bird. Uh, you got your master clue scroll here, apparently. My best in slot plate body at the moment is adamant plate body. Damn it. Okay, so up to adamant on this as well. Anything special here? No, the usual general store, I think. I guess let's go into the dungeon. Let's stop milking it. I definitely need to do like some sort of quest, right, to do this. Yeah, so they don't let me in just yet. These guys are all attacking me. They're angry. Uh, let's see if I can enter some other places. Finish barbarian training. What? <laughs> Come on, man. What do you mean? Nah, nah, you guys are all trolling. Hello, pick one of the four that we actually need to do. What the fuck? Do we do this one? Oh my god, 48 thieving, 55 mining, 46 agility I'll need for the Heart of Darkness. Damn, that's pretty bad because I can't really get that on my Varlamor account. The first quest we're gonna take a look at is the Heart of Darkness. For this one, we're gonna need a bunch of requirements that we already have. Uh, so let's just get right into it. I don't really know where to begin. First thing I'm gonna do before I do any sort of quests is I'm gonna look with the Renu here and... I can create three different teleports. I don't really care about Fortis Colosseum. I'm gonna run back to the Salvager Overlook. I'm gonna build this, and then we're gonna go down to Colossal Worm Remains. And we're not gonna build it here as well. Oh, don't tell me. I think I forgot the... Oh, I don't need the hammer and the saw. Thank God, bro. There it is. Renu is built over here in the northern side of the Varlamor as well. First thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna build a little landing site for the bird. And we're gonna do a couple of laps here and kind of try to see the XP per hour. I'll try to be as fast as possible while doing it. Uh, so let's give the good old agility a shot. If you're wondering where we are, we're located uh, on the very south of Varlamor right now. 
And this is something I want to do on my hardcore Iron Man, but I think you need 50 agility to start it. You need 50 agility for the basic, 62 agility or for advanced course. Alright, we're definitely doing advanced, let's give it a shot. Gonna assume this is where we started. And uh, let's uh, see the full lap. There we go, 37 experience, beautiful. Uh, let me just reset everything. So how do you go to the advanced one? Oh, it's so hard, I don't know where to click. Oh, like this? Do I even need to click? Oh, it's doing it by itself. Well, that's awkward. So I guess I go... Oh, probably up here is the advanced one. I see. This has to be the advanced. Like, is it... I fell on 99! Oh my god, I thought I fell with 99. I would go crazy. Uh, I guess we go down here. Oh no, it's the same rope. Okay. Where do I click? It just goes by itself, bro. I'm not even clicking. Up here, maybe? There. Yo, the agility short, 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 whatever goes kind of hard, no? Is that one lap done? There it is. 59. Okay, let's try the advanced one. Up there, and then probably jumping this. Yeah, it goes by itself, and then using the same rope we've just used. Just this time we're walking on it. That's pretty, that's pretty chill. And then it just goes automatically to this, I think. I don't think I needed to click anything there. So it's honestly quite AFK as well. Quite AFK, I say, like a little bit less click intensive. I mean, pretty chill course. What's the XP rates per hour? I don't know. There, 0, 0.59. nine. And we got 684 XP in that lap. So just do times 60, I guess, and you get the XP per hour if you are like perfect. Let's start tackling uh, the quests. We're gonna begin with the Heart of the Darkness, which I also think is one of the hardest quests. But I just wanna be able to go ahead and um, basically explore everything. I've also heard about some new Nagwas that drop like some new weapons. I wanna make sure I get to that part so I can test it then on my Varlamor Hardcore eventually. Uh, but yeah, this is just now a continuation of the quest that we've done with the Varlamor 1 expansion. So let's uh, kind of see what this quest has to give. I'm not gonna spoil it too much, uh, but I do believe there's a boss fight in the end that's uh, apparently decently hard. So what's the rewards from this quest? Is this the quest that gives me Nagwas that I need to kill or XP and Nagwas? Okay, makes sense. Okay, wait. Um, oh my god, why is this so hard? Takam is east. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Notepad. Notepad goes on for this quest, let me tell you. I hate puzzles, on god I do. Alright, that's the first trial done. Nice. Second trial, this is wave-based combat with melee and mage enemies attacking two at a time. Then four at a time, some of them do three or three AoE, which can be dodged. Use the bandages from the medical crates around the room to heal Prince Isla by left-click healing him during the fight. Okay. Wait, even this guy is dodging their spells. That's kind of chill, no? Look, he dodges the spells, bro. Like, he's a demon. Next trial. You must question each member of the cult to work out who the traitor is. Is the one who doesn't mention anything about the new world. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's this guy, bro. 100% on God. Boom, kill it. Mess him up. Sit. Yup, yup. Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on. Next trial. Fourth trial. You must battle Itzla. He has two special attacks, both of which he warns you about. The sword side turns off protection players, but you can turn them straight back on. The other is an AoE attack. Once he warns you, he's going to do it. Run behind him. Bet. Let's go. Oh my god, I literally took the worst weapon possible. It's fine. Prayers, what prayers? Come on, man. There we go. He did not make it. That should be the last challenge completed for this for now. Uh, but this is what I want to kill on the hardcore. Apparently these drop like a new crush weapon that would be very good. For me right now my best one is uh, Rune Mace, funnily enough. Oh my goodness, we just got a frozen tear. I don't even know what it does. Ooh, wait! Wait, 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 I just saw something. These drop prayer pots. Look, there's a prayer potion on the floor. That is huge for the Varlamor hardcore Iron Man. Hey, we've done it. All right, let's do the final boss. I don't know what to expect. Let's just send it. Yeah, let's go. I only have... Bro, I have... Wait. Oh, I'm fucking bad. Wait, I could just... Wait, sight is OP, no? A little specker. What are these circles on the floor? That's a cool fight, no? 
Can I? Oh, easy. Wait, that's a cool fight. I think this is the the. I I hope we can replay this. To be honest. There we go. Okay, so the fight's pretty chill. A moxie cattle banishes you from the top of your week. They really went crazy with the names, though. And I think this was the last thing this quest has to offer. Now we just go ahead and finish it. And we can then kill Ice Nagwas and maybe these boss as well. I don't know. There it is. The Heart of the Darkness. 8,000 Mining, Thieving, Slayer, Agility, XP, 2 quest points. And access to Tapoy Week. Uh, now that we've completed this quest, I'm going to go ahead and do this boss a few more times. Apparently, if we're allowed to kill it, we're going to kind of see where the drop rates are at. And then after we are bored of that, we still have three quests to do. We still have other activities to explore. So let's go ahead and kill a little bit of the boss and see how the drops feel. Looks like Amoxliatl actually has its own collection log. We got Moxie, which is another pet. Glacial Temotli, which I'm assuming is the crush weapon. And Pendant of Ates. And for that, you probably need the Frozen Tear to like charge it or something. And contrary to this boss, we also have the Hueyo Cattle, which also has a pet. Obviously the Dragon Hunter wand, and then you have Tome of Earth with the pages, and the Hides with the Seed. Two collection logs to like look forward to completing two new boss pets uh, to look forward to completing as well. Let's see, is there like a short way to do this? Or do I always need to run all the way around to get to the boss? Oh, maybe I can climb down this chain and then I'm instantly there. Okay, okay, yeah, that's pretty chill. Prayer Potions, Frozen Tear, and Chaos Runes. Some soul runes and water runes. 40 second kills are also pretty chill to be honest. Can I drag it around? Oh, I can. Then it's even easier. I thought I had limited space. Chaos runes. This basically teaches you how to do Fosani Nightmare, honestly. Yeah, I think this is the best way I'd say. It just teaches you movement. It's a very chill, fun boss to do. I like it. Wait, why am I swapping? I don't know still. Oh, that was cool. So I hit the thingy with Scythe, it also smacked the boss at the same time. And then I got the second hit like instantly on the boss after, that was super satisfying. Oh, wait, 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 that's the first thing, Rune Plate Legs. That would be an update for my Varla account, but I have the Blood Moon Plate Legs now, so, hmm. Maybe it's not even that good anymore. Uh, but yeah, Inventory, we're about to finish the trip, we have about one, maybe two more kills in us. And then we'll do a nice little price check from loot from, I'd say, about 20. Yeah, it's gonna be exactly 20. It's about 1 kill a minute. Let's take a look at the little price check, what the base loot uh, looks like. Uh, these 20 kills took us approximately 20 minutes, so it's very easy to do calculations. 221k, so you could easily say about 600k an hour if you don't get any uniques. We also got these frozen tears, which are used for an amulet. That basically teleports you around places, so that's pretty cool. We also got some Blessed Bone Shards, you can use those for the prayer XP. And we also got a minimum amount of Blood Runes that went directly to my pouch. Nothing crazy, I think it was like 10 of them or something like that. Uh, but all in all, pretty enjoyable boss, so I can see myself doing that more. However, there is more we have to explore with this Varlamor update. We have three more quests to do, more activities to do. So we're gonna return to this boss perhaps in the future. Uh, let's explore and do some other things as well. The next thing we're gonna be looking into is the Ethically Acquainted Antiquities quest. I'm gonna assume this is gonna be a bit of a meme quest. Let's uh, get it done. Oh shit, he stole, I think. Let's take a look. Yo, my guy got caught stealing, eh? Hello? Oh shit, yeah, he did steal it. Oh, do we need to make him like embarrassed? So basically, he stole the artifact from the Varlamar Museum and put it in here. Okay, let's do. It belongs to Varlamor, buddy. Oh, shit, I used the wrong thing. I need to make him embarrassed. Oh, that's my bad. Oh, shit. I, come on, man. Okay, let's see. Am I doing the right thing? Okay, yeah. Oh, this, this, this one's gonna get... This has to get him embarrassed. What? You're a loose cannon. We hit him with a you're a loose cannon, bro. That one worked. Uh, you're nothing but a common thief. There we go. Ah, oh, fuck. You're a disgrace to your entire profession. Have to hit him with this one. Yup. Yes, sir. Oh, do we hit him with you've stolen from several other museums too? Here you go, buddy. Oh, that went down. What? What if I came into your house and stole your stuff? Let's hit him with that one. 
What? Seven hours later. Look me in the eye and tell me you did the right thing. Okay, there we go, there we go. I see, that's, that's what makes him ashamed. Aren't you embarrassed to have stolen items in your collection? Boom, there we go, we've gone and done it. Hey, there we go, ethically acquired antiquities. 6,000 thieving XP, a little bit of coins, and another quest point completed. It's still not in here though, I kind of wish this like updated and now the display was here. Uh, but now we have two more quests to do. I don't think there's anything too special to see from this quest. It's just like a nice, fun quest you do. If you do not want to miss future uploads, consider subscribing. For the next quest, we're gonna be doing a Death on the Isle, and for that, I do believe we need to make it to Alderin, this brand new island. So let's figure out how to get there. I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and utilize the bird. And we're gonna explore the area a little bit, see what the area has to offer. And actually, look at this, I can teleport directly to the place. So I don't even need to go through the charter method. What I wonder, is there a guy that I could move my house to here, like estate agent? Because I could ask this estate agent to move my house to Aldarin, and then my hardcore Iron Man that is stuck on Varlamor can enter a house through house portal. This is like big news, honestly. But anyways, let's go ahead and start the quest. And we're gonna kinda see this area. It looks beautiful, to be honest. Like aesthetically speaking, the area looks really nice. Speak to Hedwell to enter the house. Use the entrance south of stairs. Oh, so there should be pots in here. There we go. Bro, in a way they're turning me into a butler. Have you guys seen how I look like? This is me, I look like a clown, bro. Why am I holding like the plate with a wine? Nah. Nah, this is not okay. I feel like this quest would be nice if I actually enjoyed the lore and like I read what they were saying. But like I might be a space bar hold enjoyer. And now we're gonna investigate a small box in the south room. Now we're gonna broken stool in the south room. Wine storage in the east room. All right, let's go. Now we speak back to the dudes and uh, yeah, we're like halfway done with this one. Okay, pickpocket, Adala, Patsy. Oh shit, I need to steal. Okay, I think I've stolen everything I could steal. Once Adala has been taken away, go back on the ground floor and follow the southwest part towards the water. Okay. Another uh, interesting quest, so to say. Uh, but there it is, Death on the Isle. is completed. A lot of thieving XP, agility, crafting, and ability to use a costume needle. What is that even? I, I don't know. Anyways, fun quest, honestly. And now we just have one more to go. Okay, apparently the costume needle does not need a thread, according to my uh, Twitch chat and YouTube chat. We are now able to have the costumer's needle and we do not need a thread anymore. So we can utilize this and do all our crafting and we no longer need the thread. So very cool. The fuck is this? Nasty knee. Who's this guy? And look, no way he said he found the loser, bro. Huh? Bring them all to me and I'll give you a nasty little surprise. This guy might be collecting those red circles. Wait a second, hold up, we're cooking right now. There's been like an unsolved Varlamor mystery, let's put it that way. That's been in the game for a while now that people have been trying to solve. And then this nasty Nick come out of nowhere here. And he's saying, yo dude, I've been dropping shit around the game. So maybe this has something to do with it. Honestly, I don't really care, but very interesting NPC and probably has something to do with it. We are an alchemical society and those stairs lead to our lab and production facilities. I'm actually quite skilled in Herbler. Would it be possible to join? You are. Well, we're always looking for new members provided. They're the aptitude needed. In that case, head on in and talk to the supervisor. Oh man, I probably need to bank stuff. So there is the Herbler minigame. I completely forgot we got that as well. Uh, so I guess we're giving this a shot now. And then we do the last quest after. There will always be three orders to choose from. Demand shifts fast here. So every time you fulfill an order, a new set will come through. That makes sense. Once you've set your desired combination of reagents, uh, collect the unfinished mixture. This will then need to be processed. The Okay, this will crystallize it. This will homogenize it. And this will concentrate it. Move on to the next order. Okay, so basically it's like a zero entrance minigame. Oh, you need to refine my own herbs. Oh, deposit on the hopper. Mox agar liar paste. So as you're doing this minigame, which I do not understand yet, you get to have a bunch of new rewards. So you have Aldarium, which is an ingredient for goading potions and prayer regeneration potions. What is a goading potion? I don't even know. Then we have Alchemist's Amulet. It is a useful when making potion, has a chance of giving an extra dose. Amulet of chemistry can be used on this amulet to give it 10 charges for each one. Okay, so basically you just put stacked 
amulets on top of this one, so it's like a convenience thing. Then you have a pre-pod device. So basically you can choose an item that can freely assemble to allow you to consume many potions in a single action, such as combat boosting potions. So you can put a super attack, strength, defense in this, click it once and it drinks the whole thing, that's pretty interesting. Potion storage, unlocks the ability to store potions within a separate area of the bank. That is really interesting, uh, I wonder how that works. Then we have a reagent pouch, which is a pouch storing herbal potion ingredients, that's also pretty interesting. And then you have the gloves, the pants, the body, which gives you a 10 IQ apparently. <laughs> and then you have the goggles, which provides 10 chance to save your secondary ingredient. So I guess you buy the goggles first. Then you also have an expert potion pack, which pretty much requires 85 herblor. And I guess you just get like a bunch of potions when you unlock this. I feel like this is one of the last things you unlock when you do this minigame. This is the one that requires 70 herblor. Again, it's just gonna give you potions. And this one is 60 herblor. Again, it's just gonna give you potions. So let me quickly learn about this minigame and then I'll tell you more about it. Apparently, this is an aggression potion. Okay, so I have an idea. Um, we're gonna return to this, but first we're gonna go ahead and complete the last quest because apparently it's a very fast one and I wanna have it done. And then we'll leave this activity for the very last thing we're gonna explore in this today's update. Okay, meet and greet. Talk to Emilio. Talk to Spice Merchant in Bazaar. Okay, now I need to go west, north of Ortus Farm. Okay, now I need to kill the wolf. A brand new monster, Dire Wolf Alpha. Let's take a look. I wonder if this uh, has any good drops. Okay, we got wolf bones. Oh, and that's it. Ah, uh, I, I was hoping it would have like uh, somewhat of a drop table. Because then you, you know, you can have a reason to keep doing this. Alright, so apparently we have like a boss fight here. Against a minotaur. I, I feel like it's kind of cool how they include you entering the Colosseum and fighting random mobs. That's like the second quest that does this. So let's see. Just gonna pray melee here and see what happens. I I know for a fact it's not gonna be as simple as just this. Move. Doing a bit of moving. Okay, so just magic prayer on the move. And then apparently there is move that's like a longer and you need to like either range pray or move. So that's magic. Yeah. And then there is one more mechanic which is uh, move. There in its range and move I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's range play. I don't know. Anyways, the boss is down very simple. And I think we can now go ahead and complete the last quest of the Varlamor expansion. And after that, we explore a little bit of the Herblor minigame. And there is a little bit of cooking XP. And he apparently now has a kebab shop where you can just buy Valramorian kebab. I wonder how much this heals. All right, here we go. We're 1 HP. We're trading Emilio. We're buying a Varlamorian kebab. And it heals us a 9. Let's buy another one. And it heals us a 9. That's a 9. Another 9. Oh! That one healed me like 30. Wow, that was an amazing kebab. You feel really invigorated. I knew that, dude, because the kebabs can heal you like crazy, right? That actually was a massive heal. Let's go back to 0. 13 to 22. That was 9. That was 9. That was 9. 42. That was 9. 58, that was 9. That didn't heal me at all, okay? 29 into 48. That was a good kebab. So the other one we got was like an incredible kebab, right? So it can heal you a 9, a 0, a lot, or like even more. So interesting mechanic. I kind of like it. But yeah, let's explore the Herblor minigame now that we've done pretty much everything else. Okay, so I don't have a very good understanding of this yet, but what I do know is you need three different types of herbs, and the better the herbs, the better the rewards is what we are assuming. Yes, how does this work? I can just throw this in there, and it makes the paste. Okay, so this way you make different sorts of paste. Let's see if there's a way to do this faster. Oh yeah, you can definitely do it faster. So if you click right as it disappears, you can speed this process up, but if you don't click, it will be like somewhat mediocrely slowish. I think I'll be able to do this on the Varla Hardcore as well, because I get herbs from doing Perilous Moons. I just don't know what's the minimum herb requirement to start doing this. Torstol gave me Aga paste. I need something else than Torstol's then, because I need the third type of paste as well. 
Okay, so for the last style of paste, we're gonna need Marentil or Taromin, and then we'll be able to get all the pastes. So I guess it doesn't matter what kind of herbs, you probably, if you're a main account, you want the cheapest possible. If you're Iron Man, you just throw the herbs that you don't really utilize. Now we have all three sorts of pastes. Again, if you're an Iron Man, just throw away the herbs you don't plan to make potions with. Oh, and apparently, if you grab the book by this bookshelf, it can tell you which herbs create what. I mean, I, I guess I get it. So if you want to make a Mammoth Mighty Mix, you need like three times mocks. If you need this, you need two times mocks, one time this. I guess this is like what you follow. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you can deposit stuff in the hopper here. So now we can start cooking, basically. Can I deposit more? No, okay. Okay, so Marley's Moonlight is purple, purple, red. That is the order. I see. The colors will match the potion. Also, I need to keep operating it until it's uh, blue, blue, red. Wait, 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 we're cooking. I guess it depends which way you click. Oh, I'm dumb. You can press... No, wait, you can... Eh? So this is it, like blue, blue, red. I don't know what I did. Is there like three? Oh, there is like three. I see it now. Look, you have three levers. You pull them. You get the thingy that you need. In this case, we need to get Marley's Moonlight because up here it says Marley's Moonlight. Okay, now we have blue, blue, red. We have blue, blue, red. Ah, okay, listen, I was lacking crucial information. Uh, so now we grab this potion. Now we have a Marley's Moonlight. Concentrate, Hemogonize. Aha, I see it. And this is Crystallize. Okay, so this one is Concentrate. Okay, now it's cooking. Okay, so now I've concentrated this. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what is going on, bro. <laughs> then put it on the conveyor. Oh, that's already it. Fulfill conveyor. Oh, and that was one thing done. Okay, so I just had to do that. So these are all homogeneous now. So I need to make something for homogeneous. Mix a lot. Okay, so now I need blue, green, red. Ah, okay, let's try to do one fast. I think I get what we need to do. You can basically pick between any of these, right? Let's do mix a lot because it's on top. Mix a lot is blue, green, red. Let's pop uh, blue, uh, green, red. I don't, I hope this works, yeah? Blue, green, red. I don't think it matters which way you do it. Yeah. So blue, green, red, and then we take it. That should now be mix a lot. And now we need to utilize it on the homogeneous. So there we go, homo homogeneous potion. And that's now gonna be making mix a lot. Now if you wanted to do it faster, while this is mixing, you can probably be making another potion already. So now we can fulfill the order already. Oh, that's how easy it is. Okay, I see it, I see it. Let's try the same thing with Marley's Moonlight. We click it, Marley's Moonlight, blue, blue, red. We click here, we click... I am a bit bad at this. Okay, so blue, blue, red, potion. And then... We need to, we need to homogenous it. And then we could already work on the next one, but we are not that efficient yet. We get it here, we deliver it. And that's the minigame for you. You get these rewards, you get mocks, and you get lie rewards. This is just overcooked. It's really simple, actually, once you get to it. And now, as you can see, we have some rewards here. And the more rewards we get, the more stuff we can buy. I would probably go for something like... I feel like potion storage looks really interesting. Super expensive, though. And then the full alchemist set and whatnot. Very simple, self-explanatory minigame for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more of the bosses because I wanna drop some of the new uniques. And if you enjoyed today's walkthrough of the Varlamor 2.0 update, do consider to give the video a like, maybe comment and subscribe as well. I'm gonna see if I maybe do like a loot from X amount of certain new bosses, or if I maybe don't even enjoy them enough, we'll see. However, I do think I will maybe hunt for both of the new pets because they are probably pretty cool. But yeah, that was it from it. Have a good one and bye-bye.